this video will introduce you to code organization because remember that we always want to write code which is easy to maintain that is it shall be easy to change its functionality and also easy to extend that is it shall be easy to add new functionality and in order to reach these goals the code must be flexible which means exactly this when we change something or add something the lines we are writing we are dealing with should be exactly those that are changed or those that are added we should not have to change lines with code that is not supposed to be changed that has nothing to do with the functionality being added or changed and the code must also be easy to understand because if not our smart solutions will just be changed by <laughs> other developers remember that you cannot assume the same developer is working with the code all the lifetime of the code it must be possible for other developers to understand your smart solutions to reach these goals the code must be divided into subsystems where each uh, subsystem or layer is uh, occupied with one specific task we do not want the code to do a bit of everything but we split it into subsystems that have clear responsibilities and this is called high cohesion so high cohesion means exactly this the code does not do a bit of everything but belongs to a subsystem that has a clear specific task and the code is dealing only with this specific task. So that is one of the properties that the, we want the code to have and the other property is low coupling which means that different subsystems, different parts of the code should have low dependency on each other because that way if we change in one subsystem or one part of the code there is not much risk having to change in another subsystem another layer so this is the goal of the code structure to get high cohesion and low coupling and by reaching these goals we will make the code flexible and easy to understand and when the code is flexible and easy to understand it will be easy to maintain and extend so uh, architecture is, is uh, a much bigger topic than this but uh, that's all we are concerned with right now okay so now let's see how good architecture can help us reach these goals we will use an mvc model view controller architecture model view controller identifies two specific tasks that programs have not all programs but a very big subset of, of the programs and especially programs in this course so this is a very commonly used architecture and the, the two subsystems that are identified by the model view controller pattern are view which is the user interface the view is uh, concerned with how to present the program state to the user and how to react to user gestures key presses swipes mouse gestures whatever so this is the task of, of the view to interact with the user o only this user interaction nothing else and the other subsystem or layer uh, identified by the model view controller pattern is the model so the model is the program state the program's view of the reality okay so these are two clearly different things to interact with the user and to model the reality and th that is what the MVC pattern tells us to split the uh, program into these two different layers fine but uh, that's not enough there is an another component here the controller and to realize the need of the controller I will try to show what would happen if there was no controller so I will try to explain this with the help of an analogy this image is supposed to illustrate the process of building a schoolhouse the blue persons up here are supposed to be uh, people working at the school like teachers the headmaster the janitor the school canteen uh, and so on and the uh, orange persons down at the bottom are supposed to be uh, construction workers like carpenters plumbers electricians project managers and so on so in this not so good organization anyone up here working at the school is allowed to talk to any one of the construction workers so for example this person here might ask uh, this person down here hey could you tear down this this wall I need a bigger classroom and uh, this one might tell uh, this one uh, please add uh, some extra walls here I, I want smaller group rooms and 
this one tells that one oh please add a pipe here I need a tap here okay so one can realize there will not be much of a school built with this organization so instead we need a better organization and that is to add this uh, steering group here the green thing here in the middle so now the school personnel is only allowed to talk to the steering group and only the steering group is allowed to talk to the construction workers so now the project is well organized and the persons up here have no uh, knowledge about the person up uh, down there there are they are completely isolated it is only the green person in the middle who has detailed knowledge about the uh, construction workers all requests uh, something needs to be done those requests are passed to the this man in the middle uh, the green and, and the green dispatches it to the red orange at the bottom and it's this uh, green one that has the detailed knowledge about who to talk with at the bottom and wh who shall do what so uh, the green as you might have guessed is the controller layer so the uh, MVC pattern identifies these three layers the view which is where commands originate the controller whose task is to translate the commands originating from the view to detailed instructions to the model and the model is the program's view of the reality where the actual work is done okay so that's the uh, model view controller pattern uh, a lot more can be said about uh, model view controller and there are lots of variants of it uh, but uh, that is enough for, for us now so we will also look at another architectural pattern and that is the layer pattern while the uh, model view controller pattern specifically told us to uh, have the uh, the layers view controller and model the layer pattern more generally tells us to split the program into layers subsystems called the layers so in this image here there are three extra layers first there is the data layer which might be the database where the data is actually stored then there is the db handler layer whose task is to provide an interface between the model and the uh, data layer just you could say that just like the controller provides uh, an interface between the view and the model and separates those the um, db handler layer provides an interface between the database and the, the database and the model and separates those so we don't need database calls all over the model okay but we will talk more about db handler layer later in the course uh, and then in this image there is also a startup layer which contains the main method so the task of the startup layer is simply to start the program that does not belong in any other layer okay but these are typical layers but exactly which layers th there shall be that is up to discussion and can be different in, in different programs the layer pattern just tells us to split the subsystem into layers so we must really be observant about the need of layers and a particular task should not be mixed with uh, other code in other classes doing completely different things if, if the code we are about to write does not fit logically together with any of the existing classes then it, it might be a sign that there is the need for a new layer and uh, I think it helps to think of the layers just like the layers in a cliff here in this image we can think of these layers as being organized top to bottom somehow this is the top of course <laughs> and this is the bottom in this image and in the same way we can think that the view is at the top of the, the software layers and the data is at the bottom and the uh, calls shall proceed from the topmost layers to the lower layers this dashed arrow means dependency some kind of dependency so um, it's appropriate just as this diagram shows to have dependencies from higher layers to lower layers of course we need that right there is no way to reach a lower layer without a dependency from a higher layer but we do not want dependencies from lower layers to higher layers no we don't want those and we don't don't want that thing for example 
because that would create extra dependencies, give us higher coupling and make the code a lot messier. Also we would like to avoid calls directly from the view to the model like this. Uh, because that would break the uh, idea about the MVC pattern and we would be back to uh, this thing here where we have the messy organization. Right, so that was a few words about code organization. Of course there's very much to say about this topic but uh, that's sufficient for our needs now.